Uh, he's originally uh, from Quebec, but he got his graduate degrees from Georgia Tech, which I see there's a lot of Georgia Tech people involved in this field, so that's a common thing. Um, he was in the faculty of Purdue University and then wisely moved back up to his home country and has been at University of Louisville for quite a while, 1988. Are you um, he holds the Canada Research Chair in Enterprise Engineering. Um, he is a founding member of the Inter-University Research Center on Enterprise Networks, Logistics, and Transportation. He is the immediate past president of KICME and um, has done a tremendous amount of research. I don't want to read it all, but I think Ben, at least in our community, is known for his passion and his innovation, both in research and in education. So we were really, really pleased that he agreed to come and share his week with us. Okay, as I've got the job to be the, the last official presenter, and my job is to uh, change the pace a little bit and put you toward more and more of the future and where where it might be going. And uh, the, the perspective I'm going to take through the, the presentation is knowing that I'm, I'm at MHTI, uh, and we're talking material link teaching, and uh, so my emphasis will be making sure that I pass out, out this one influence teaching in there, but I, I basically I see it in two ways. Uh, it will provide you, if you want to challenge students or show them where it might be going, okay, that you'll have, I think, uh, very nice material. And, uh, and second, uh, I'll also put emphasis on a bunch of things that we're doing now that, that will provide toolings and uh, exercise, all kind of stuff that uh, kids uh, uh, in class, uh, in, in projects could, uh, could tackle. So I'm going to go through it. Uh, the menu, uh, you've read it uh, as it goes along, and I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to talk about the physical internet. So most of you have never heard about that before, so I'm going to take time defining that. So first, I'm going to be a sh doing a short overview then going through the motivation for it all, because if we don't go through that, then it looks like uh, an academic exercise, a okay, page just for the fun of juggling with concepts. And that's not, uh, that's not that at all. Uh, then we're going to go deep into the vision uh, and talk at the end more, uh, a bit about the initiative uh, where we're going with the international initiative. And I'm going to try to put uh, much more emphasis than I normally do on the, the material handling uh, innovation that's associated. So let's go at it bluntly, okay? Uh, we make a claim, an assertion, uh, that the way physical objects are moved, handled, stored, realized, realized in broad sense of produce, assemble, finish, personalize, recycle, etc. Uh, supplied and used throughout the world is neither efficient nor sustainable economically, environmentally, and socially. Okay? And I'm going to try to uh, hammer that to you uh, in, last, in the next few minutes. Uh, this said, then our goal is to solve that problem. Okay? So try to see if we can come up with something that will help okay, uh, enable global efficiency and sustainability of physical object movement, handling, storage, realization, supply, and usage. And our vision for doing that is to evolve toward what we call a, a physical internet on a worldwide basis. So uh, first up, uh, what you're going to get here, most of it uh, came from about three years, from 2006 to 2009, of brewing the concept, basically, but the, the spark for the concept uh, came from uh, 2006, uh, uh, the issue of The Economist, that, that was a front page, okay, read very nicely, the physical internet, the survey of logistics, wow, looks good, okay, so I was in an airport, okay, purchased it, read through it uh, during my flight, and at the end of it, I felt yeah, that's a very nice survey of logistics, good case studies, and it's worth reading. It's a nice read. Okay? 
But for me, that was not a physical internet. I didn't read anything in there. That was what I would call a physical version of the internet that we have in the digital world. Okay? I said, huh. Then knowing who I am, I couldn't sleep for many nights afterwards. Okay? So beginning to think, what would be a physical internet? Okay? What would it look like? What would it entail? Its scope? Uh, what would be different from now? Okay? So I began to spin on that and so on. And after a while, the second question that popped up was, why in the world would we need something like that? Are we not nice as we are right now? So many bright minds, bright companies, bright technology that has been put together. So why would we need something else? Okay. So basically, the second question is what I'm going to start now. Okay. And then I'll go into defining more what the physical internet is all about. So basically, why do we need something? Okay, and physical internet could be the answer. Okay, uh, is this inefficiency and unsustainability claim that, that we mentioned earlier? And I won't repeat the, repeat the detail. <coughs> but let's put some meat into it. Okay, I won't I won't go with a bunch of numbers. Okay, that's not my goal, and they're very difficult to put together on a worldwide basis, okay? But from an economic perspective, logistics and transportation, okay? Everything deals with freight, merchandise, and all that. That's mostly between 10 and 20 percent burden on the GDP in most developed countries, and I'd say most countries uh, in the world, okay? And what's more important is that the worldwide cost for logistics grows faster than world trade. So it gets worse. Okay? It costs us more and more. The price of what we buy, many products we buy, the cost of logistics is higher than the cost of the product. On an environment perspective, we're one of the heaviest polluters, biggest energy consumers, and uh, biggest greenhouse gas generators in all the domains. We're working on numbers now, and that's not a full claim because the numbers are being chewed. But like in Canada, if we take the Kyoto objectives, okay, and that kind of stuff, okay, we could succeed to achieve all of that just by being more clever with logistics. Just with that. Okay? And then we can go with all kind of, a, of nice stuff on all, all the other domains. But just for us, it'd be enough for Canada to meet the, green, the Kyoto objectives. <coughs> and basically, what's worse is that there's a growing negative contribution. So it's getting worse every year while okay, the nation's goals is, to, is for every reductions. So it's like it's climbing by 20%, and the European Commission wants it to get, get down by 50-80%. It just doesn't ring. Okay? We're going the wrong way. Now, on a social basis, okay, <coughs> there are two levels. Uh, I'll start with the lower one. Uh, people that work in logistics, uh, we have a bunch of people working in manufacturing that are now in, in logistics uh, in developed countries. And we get more and more in developing countries also. Uh, and, but the, the job conditions are, in, are not so nice, okay? They're, and we have a lot of work on the ergonomics, human factors, all that. Okay? But uh, I, I ask, I'll get more detail later on. But the goal is to improve their working condition. And <coughs> also making sure that we solve, the, there's a lack of fast, reliable, affordable accessibility and mobility of physical objects for the mass, vast majority of the world's population. We can get stuff, okay? But we cannot get it at the right price, very fast, reliably, as we need to. And the more you go into developing countries, the worse it is. So that's the first shot at it. <coughs> but that's a, like a, a very high-level picture. And most people relate to that, but it's too high, okay? So what I've come up with is a series of 13 symptoms, okay? That those symptoms are 
uh, are much more easy to grasp, okay? And there are chunks of a picture. This is a mosaic we're, we're going to build, okay? So it's like impressionists. I'm going to pitch those to you, and somehow in your mind, you're going to, with the art of it, okay, you're going you're gonna to put it together and develop your own picture, okay? So that's, that's a goal. So let's shoot with the first ones, okay? We're shipping air and packaging. Look at containers, look at truck trailers, look at wagons, okay? You'll see this is unbelievable, okay? Worked with several companies, they're tr full truck load. It was supposed to be full truck load, but in average, it's 50% empty. And then I'm not even counting, I'm counting the packaging as part of that 50%. But that's a value added. So if I remove all the packaging, Okay? and I just get to what is really the adding value and I'm bringing, well, studies like in France, one of my colleagues, uh, Eric Badeau, uh, I think they are on the order of uh, 10 to 12 percent uh, efficiency of, of transportation according to loading, okay, the, those issues. So we're bad, okay? We don't think we're good. We're really bad, except in some very specific situations, okay? And when I say uh, half full or half empty, for example, it's combination of the most restricting in weight and volume, okay, in there. Empty travel, okay, and all of us know people that work in logistics, operation research, and so on, so they tra tra traveling salesmen, vehicle routing, okay, so uh, reducing, okay, empty travel is a big deal, okay, and we've been working at it for years, okay, <laughs> but look, look on the road, okay, look in, on the rails, okay, and you'll see there's a huge amount Okay, of empty travel. Some is due to the unbalance, okay? But a lot is due to the way to organize with, with the stuff, okay? Third, okay, I, I use truckers as one example, but I can use all kinds of logistics uh, operators also. But truckers have become the modern cowboys, okay? So they go on the road, okay, oftentimes for many days, okay, and uh, they just go there on their big horsepower and, and get going. They have hard family life, social life, their health is not that good. The, the turnover of, of truck driver is unbelievably high. They're always training new ones. Okay, this is crazy life, okay, uh, in there. But then, and then uh, there was a, the Material Handling Logistics Summit in, in Montana a few years ago. Okay? I went up front, okay, and we had 40 of the top players in, in the field in front. And I said, how many more of you would want their kid to work in a distribution center? They're all in the field. None of them raised their hand. None. There's some DCs in southern USA, okay, where there are 26 languages spoken in a DC. And many people don't speak English in there. Okay? So they have to think that the WMS that deals in 26 languages. Why so? Well, who wants that kind of job, okay? So they end up with all the immigrants, that's the first job they can get and get going with this, okay? So this is terrible, okay? And that's part of the picture we need, we need to solve. <coughs> Look at different perspective now, okay? Products in their existence life, okay? They mostly sit idle, okay? Their store were unneeded, Okay, yet so often unavailable fast where they're really needed. Okay, but understand, manufacturers store products, distributors do, retailers do, users do. Okay, they're all storing products. Okay, but in fact, in vast quantities, but not oftentimes they store the wrong product at the wrong place. Okay, so the response times, the service levels are oftentimes constraining. And, and oftentimes unreliable. If we take the dual of this and look at the facilities themselves, okay? Production and storage facilities are poorly or badly used, okay? Well, most businesses invest in storage and production facilities, which are lowly used at least some part of the year and oftentimes most of the year, okay? And, and sometimes they're occupied but they're doing stuff that shouldn't be done at 